You're standing at a, a middle-class farmstead in recreation at New Echota. Uh, in the 1820s and 1830s, most of the Cherokee uh, lifestyle had gone through about 100 years of change from their early traditional culture. You had a lot of assimilation into what we would consider the American and European culture and lifestyle, and this is a partial recreation of one of the farmsteads that would have been at New Echota. There would have been about four dozen buildings making up the entire town of New Echota. The middle class farmstead you see is typical of what some of the upper echelon and the socioeconomic classes of the Cherokee Nation were living in. And it's very typical of what you would have found around the frontier Georgia also. Most of the Cherokee lived in a farm about half this size. The cabin would have been about half as big as the one you see behind me. The corn crib, the barn, and smokehouse and other support buildings would have been very similar in construction, but not as nice of quality or as big in size. There were about 60 year-round residents at New Echota. That included Cherokee, that included uh, non-Indians, missionaries like Samuel Wooster who lived here, uh, African-American slaves who some of the Cherokee did own and farmed their land around the Cherokee Nation, as well as mixed blood, some who had intermarried into the Cherokee Nation, both of white and of uh, Native American and African-American ancestry. There were about 60 residents, about four dozen buildings, and that included the public buildings like the council house, the courthouse, the printing office for the newspaper that was at New Echota, but everything else would have consisted of buildings like you see behind me. And the changes that were going on in their culture and their lifestyle by this time period was for a couple of reasons. One, a lot of it made life a lot easier for them. If they had access to firearms that they could trade for during the 1700s, if they had access to metal tools to farm with, then that gave them a lot easier lifestyle for their farming activities and the earlier tools they had. But it also showed the surrounding states that they were trying to change their way of life so that the Tennessee settlers, the Georgia citizens, would feel more safe around them, so to speak, and that they were gonna live a lifestyle similar to theirs. But we had already developed that melting pot philosophy of, you know, if you live like us and be like us, we'll accept you like us. Uh, over the years, it came to be that it just wasn't gonna be happening. Uh, Georgia needed this land because of the growth of its population, but also just because of that time period of the racial prejudice that was against not just an African-American slave population, but also the native tribe. There were a lot of mineral rights that the state of Georgia wanted to control. A lot of people think of gold being the main culprit of what made the Cherokee lose their land, but it was really the land itself. When the land was given away in the Georgia Land Lottery, they were acquiring good farming land as well as the mineral riches of things like gold.